Hello to you and welcome to Adelante Chicago. I'm Lourdes Duarte. Thank you so much for joining us today. Bienvenidos. We begin with a longtime partner for Latinos in Chicago. Casa Central has been around for decades and now they have a new leader. You may recognize a face. You probably do. Marty <laughs> Castro has been in Chicago for some time now, his entire life actually. He even served as chair of the U.S. Civil Rights Commission. Welcome. Nice to see you. Thanks, Lourdes. I'm glad to be here. Appreciate All right. the invite. Let's talk a little bit about Casa sure. Central. This is a brand new role for you, you said since November. Right. Why the switch? Why the change? Well, my term on the Civil Rights Commission, which I served on for six years by appointment of President Obama, uh, was coming to a conclusion. And while it wasn't a full-time position the six years, I spent a lot of time in D.C. and working on that issue. Uh, I wanted to come back home and continue to work on some of the projects that I was working on through my consulting practice, as well as some of my other initiatives in the nonprofit world. And I was approached by Casa Central. Uh, which had been in the process of looking for a CEO for a period of time and had not found the right person. So some folks on the board suggested to the board leadership to contact me as the potential new CEO. Uh, I instantly said I wanted to be helpful. Uh, I wasn't sure yet if I wanted to be the full-time CEO, mm -hmm. but the work that I've been doing throughout my career on education, health care, rights of, of immigrant communities is the, exactly the heart of what Casa Central does. So, uh, I agreed to come on as the interim CEO to continue to strengthen the organization, build on our successes, but also try to bring an innovative perspective to it because I've been fortunate to have worked in st state, federal government, corporate America, the, the legal practice, philanthropy, and uh, serve on a number of nonprofit boards. So to bring those different perspectives mm -hmm. to some of the opportunities as well as the challenges that a lot of nonprofits face. So for me, it's a great way to help steward and join in the leadership of an organization which, as you said, is is a gem for Latino Chicago. We've been around since yeah. 1954 and will be around for many decades to go. Okay. I'm going to press you on the interim part sure. of this. Uh, how long are we talking about? Uh, is this a short-term thing? Is this something that could turn into a long-term uh, project It could turn into a long-term yeah. project, okay. certainly. Uh, I just want to come in and be able to bring to bear my experiences and resources so that uh, SCASA continues to be successful in an interim period, if that's what it turns out. And if it turns out to be longer, so be it. But really what I'm focused on is, particularly at these turbulent and challenging times, and we've had state budget issues, as has every nonprofit serving every community in mm -hmm. the state of Illinois. But we also have some impending federal issues. And so I want to be there at the helm to make sure that during these rocky times for nonprofits and for communities that are underserved, that I can bring to bear some of the experiences I've had yeah. in government and corporate and, and business to be able to help steer that ship. Let's dig a little deeper on this whole federal issue mm -hmm. right now. And with the Trump administration, uh, organizations like Casa Central are right in the middle of it, really, right in the thick of it. You may lose some funding. Every nonprofit in Chicago and every nonprofit across the United States, should President Trump's proposed budget uh, be enacted by Congress, is going to lose a lot of resources. Uh, they have already proposed in the draft budget. And it's got many hoops to jump through before it becomes sure. a final budget. But nonetheless, for example, uh, they're proposing the elimination of the community development block grants, which is an extremely important chunk of money that the federal government gives to states to be able to support all sorts of programs. It supports a lot of our work at CASA uh, on homelessness. We have a homeless, transitional homeless shelter called La Posada, and we get money from community development block grants. It has historically been a very bipartisan supported program because it helps communities across the country, both Democrat and Republican, rural and, and urban. So hopefully when that debate takes place in Congress, mm -hmm. uh, organizations such as ours and individuals who support us will educate our elected officials about the dire impact of something like that. Okay. Have you started to think about, though, what you do, because as, as we were talking mm -hmm. before the interview, so if money gets taken away from you federally, it falls on the state to try to, uh, you know, recuperate some of that money or, or give right. you some of those funds. And our state right now is not doing that well. Well, the state's a little dysfunctional. It yeah. continues to be that way. A lot of good people are trying to straighten out the state budget um, morass, but it continues to be one where we don't have a state budget yet. So. Organizations like ASA, uh, who do rely on resources from the government, we have been looking towards other resources. We've gone to our corporate and foundation partners and asked them to please do more. In fact, we're very fortunate 
one of the first grants I was able to help bring to CASAS from the Arthur Foundation, a uh, foundation here in Chicago focused on health care in the Latino community. And they were great to give us a $150,000 general operating grant, which we've never gotten from them. So we're going to organizations like that who've never been part of our family and saying, hey, we could use the support and they are being generous. But we're also going back to organizations and individuals that do support us over time and saying, can you do a little more to help us? And then we put on events to try to reach individuals. Every organization you talk to in the nonprofit world is always trying to see how we can get more individual donors and supporters. So we're going to be hosting a series of activities, for example, in June. June 5th through the 9th, we have our Week of Hope activities. And what that's going that? to be kicked off by a, a fundraiser at Revolution Brewery in the evening on, on June 5th. We're going to raise some dollars there. On the next day, we're going to have a Twitter town hall where we're going to talk about violence prevention and violence in Chicago's communities because we have some programs at GASA that are really cutting edge and award winning. We work with communities, uh, families in terms of fighting domestic violence, but we also have a program called Safe from the Start that takes young individuals, kids, who have been the victims of or witnesses of violence and provides them with behavioral health treatment so that they don't become abusers and violence prevent, uh, provokers themselves because studies show that young kids who are exposed or victims of, they tend to become violence committers. Yeah. So we're trying to disrupt that at the various earliest stages. So the next day we're going to have a community fair. We're going to bring resources and uh, events and organizations and information to the community. And then on the, that Thursday we're going to have a Facebook live town hall visit of various of our 14 programs at Casa Central. So we're trying to use media, social yeah. media much more. Uh, as well as just let people know the work that we've been doing since 1954 here and in then Chicago. And you said you've got your gala that's coming up uh, in October. October 20th mm -hmm. at the Sheraton, and we're looking forward to that. It's going to be a fun event because this year we're going to do a Dia de los Muertos theme. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so okay. uh, you know, we want to be continue to be culturally relevant. All of the work that we do for our community is culturally competent and culturally relevant. So we thought, let's make our events culturally sure. focused as well. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Marty thanks. Castro, welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you for taking on this role. We appreciate it. Well, thanks for having the opportunity to come. All right, there's the information it. on the screen. If you're interested in Week of Hope, it's the annual spring fundraiser, June 5th through the 9th. You can always get more information by going online, casacentral.org, and there's your number, 773-645-2300.